That's the ID. Now that the ID of the radius is cut, all I have to do is move my pin to the OD hole location in this trammel arm. Now you've probably noticed, I'm dropping this motor and this cutter about an eighth of an inch with every pass. If I don't, I could take too big of a bite and get a lot of chatter on the outside of this radius. What I'm after here is a really smooth finish cut. Now let me show you how easy it is to add a couple more details to this radius blank. Now the really cool thing about using a 5 8 hole in this trammel arm and using a 5 8 template guide in our routers is I can switch routers. They're almost interchangeable. They'll slide right into this trammel arm again. But I need a new pivot point. Now the casing that we're trying to match has a v-groove exactly a half of an inch in from the OD of the casing. So to mark a half, I'm just going to hold the 8 inch mark right on the OD of that casing and mark a half inch in. Now I'm always tempted to use math to try to figure out where the new pivot point is, but it's much simpler to use a trammel arm. So let me get this router trammel out of the way. And instead of relying on math or my tape measure, I'm going to rely on my trammel points and on this wooden stick with these two trammel points on it. And this might look like, you know, some old world technology, but let me tell you, this thing is precise. All I have to do is drop this fixed pin into my center hole right on my block and come down here and move the pencil trammel right to my little mark that I made, that half inch mark, and tighten it down. Now all I need to do is take the steel trammel and put the point of it right on the center of the cutter and mark the new pivot point. I used a simple bearing guiding router bit to cut the chamfer.